Another... Oh, that's the first little guy that I murdered, and now he's probably back from the grave, laughing at me. Yep. <laughs> Why not? Hello and welcome, Dirty William here, back with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. Today is Rakdos Sacrifice, because why not? Uh, I was looking at some other decks, something else to, to play, and um, I was like, well, I've already got the Black Cleave Cliffs, I've already got the Sulphur Springs, I happen to have a couple of Blazemire Verge, so why not spend some wild cards on this? I also had four Rottenmouth Viper, so... Just really quickly, I'm down to 60 commons, 11 uncommons, 6 rares, and 17 mythic. So making a dual colored anything is going to be a pain in the neck anymore uh, going forward because I don't have the lands to do it, basically, which kind of stinks. So let's get into this deck. Uh, we have Final Vengeance, which is a kill spell. I have to either sacrifice a creature of enchantment, but I get to exile the creature for only one mana. It is a sorcery. Greedy Freebooter, a 1-1 one, one for 1. Whenever it dies, I scry 1, and I can create a treasure token, which is relevant. Hopeless Nightmare, uh, that is making somebody discard, uh, plus it, puts a, it does 2 damage to them as well. Um, whenever this thing goes away, I can scry to basically look at the top um, 2 cards in my library, figure out if I need them or not. Scavenger's Talent. Whenever one or more creatures you control die, create a food token. This ability triggers only once a turn. Uh, level 2, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, target player mills two cards. And then the last one, whenever I've been goofing around with this, I haven't ever upgraded this to level, th uh, level 3. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice three other non-land permanents. If you do, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a final finality counter on it. I guess that would be good for either Rottenmouth Viper or maybe Braids, but mostly Rottenmouth Viper, I would think. Uh, Spiteful Hexmage, a 3-2 for only one mana. Drawback is, you have to create a cursed roll token and attach it to a creature you control, which means that enchanted creature has a base power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. So if you play this guy on turn 1, he effectively is going to make himself a 1-1 one, one instead of a 3-2. So you got to get rid of that uh, enchantment somehow. Clockwork Percussionist has haste. It's 1-1. One, one. Whenever it dies, exile the top card of your library. You may play it until the end of your next turn. As you can see, there's lots of stuff here that's very low cost. There's also only like, what, 19 lands in this thing, which is kind of crazy. Torch the Tower, very simple uh, removal. Um, this over Shock, mostly because it says if a permanent dealt damage by Torch, the Tower would die this turn exiled instead. There's lots of stuff that would ni be nice to like exile. Uh, we've got Nowhere to Run, which is from Duskmorn. It's an enchantment. Basically, when it has Flash, so I can play it any time that I want to, as long as I've got the mana. And it gives a creature a minus three, minus three until end of turn. Plus, on top of that, um, ward abilities don't trigger. If something has uh, ward ability or hexproof or something, doesn't matter. I can still uh, get rid of it that way. Disturbing Mirth. Uh, this is one of the kind of linchpin cards, I think, mostly for card draw. It's an enchantment. doesn't do too much on the surface. Uh, whenever it comes into play, I can sacrifice another enchantment. If I do, I get to draw two cards. Uh, whenever this is sacrificed then Manifest Dread, which means I look at the top two cards of my library, I can take one of them, put it face down, and play it as a, a creature, no matter what it is, if it's a land or spell or whatever. Then we have Braids, which is kind of instrumental to this deck as well. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. So, Let's say somebody's stuck on two lands. I've got four lands, and I'm like, you know, I'm good with four lands. I can sacrifice one of my lands, going down to three, then they have to make the decision, do I want to sacrifice one of my lands, or am I just going to lose two life and give this Yahoo a card? Kind of depends. Uh, Urbrask's Forge, which is a really neat little card. It's an artifact. At the beginning of your turn, uh, basically you get to pump out a, an X1 uh, critter, with uh, Trample and Haste. Uh, it's only an X1, but it keeps getting bigger and bigger. First turn, 
it comes into play, you, you get a 1-1, one, one, then a 2-1, two, two, then a 3-1, and so on and so forth. And you can stack the triggers here so that at the end of your turn you can say, hey, you know what, I want to do the braids thing first because the, the dude that this thing was created from, or the little guy that was created from this, um, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice that because it's going to go away anyway. Sacrifice it. Now you, opponent, have to sacrifice a creature or you can take two damage I get to draw a card. So kind of some good stuff there. Um, like anything else, dice to removal. And then finally the big daddy is the Rotten Mouth Viper. Um, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of non-land permanents. This spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way. Whenever it enters or attacks, put a blight counter on it. For each blight counter on it, each opponent loses four life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So, the idea is, you got a bunch of little dudes, right? You got a bunch of little guys, and they are creating... Uh, possibly some treasure tokens, or they can, if they die, then it's cool because you get a benefit, or they're making an enchantment you can get rid of, right? Uh, or you've already popped this thing down and somebody's discarded a, a card, or you have a disturbing mirth and you want another dude, or this thing is just not very good anymore. You sacrifice a bunch of stuff and you can get this thing out like way, way early, um, which is great, but again, dies to removal. Uh, some removal. Uh, somebody has a go for the throat, it dies, etc., etc. You know how it is. You just have to be in the right spot. Now, the sideboard for this, which I'm not doing best of three, but I might eventually try best of three. Um, you've got duress, cruel claws heist, uh, duress basically, and cruel claws heist is, is basically versus control type of things. Or you can also use the duress to, hey, does that. Does the opponent have, like, a kill spell in their hand before I play this thing? Let's duress them and find out, you know, just to make absolutely sure. Pyroclasm for all the little weenie uh, things. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, I put in Ghost Vacuum and a Lane Line of the Void for, like, uh, graveyard kind of decks. I got a couple Withering Torments in case they have enchantments that are just terrible. I put a 1 of Virtue of Persistence just because I can use it as removal and then later on uh, maybe possibly cast it, but I think this is the wrong call for this because there's not a lot of mana. There's 19 lands in this deck, so I don't think that's going to work. Uh, so creature-heavy matchups, I can also go with a couple of lilies, make them sacrifice stuff, I can pyroclasm their guys away. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But again, I'm not going to be doing best of three, just some best of one today. Here we are with our opponent, No Hitter 3. Welcome to the game. So, let's see, we've got uh, three of those guys. That's really interesting. Um, they get to go first, that's great. Uh, one of the things with this deck I've noticed is getting the land and stuff right is just really a pain. It's really difficult to do. So let's see what they play here on turn one. Swamp, so they probably have a cut down. Oh, Death Touch, nice, okay. Well, let's see. Let us play a Swamp and a Hopeless Nightmare. So, Poison deck, which is neat. So they have to discard a card and they lose two life. I don't really have anything that I can play right now as far as, like, a, I'll play the Clockwork Percussionist next turn and hit him for one, I guess. They did not attack. Interesting. Deep Cavern Bats, so they're going to see all my tricks. They're going to see my final vengeance and take that away, I'm sure. So this is basically just mono black aggro. Yeah. Dude, you got to take the final vengeance. Or next turn I play the Sulphur Springs, I play the Clockwork. Yeah, get rid of that. Got to get rid of the kill spell. Mm-hmm. Get a poison counter. Ooh, Rotten Mouth Viper. That's not going to help me at all. Well, yeah, we'll put out a Percussionist. They're not going to block with their bat, for sure. One wouldn't think that they would. Okay, that's better. I think I should have gone for the Sulphur Springs turn one, just so I'd have access to that other one. I'd be able to play two of the Percussionists, so effectively they'd be down to, like, 16 at this point. Leon, sure, make me get rid of a guy. Get in my way, tend to regret it. I would think. Yeah, sacrifice the creature. Let's see what we get. One 
Then. See, a little bit of value. Hopeless Nightmare. That's not bad. Attack me for two. I get another poison counter. I'm down to 17. They're at 18 because of the life gain. And um, let's play Blazemire Verge. Let's play a Hopeless Nightmare. I can get rid of whatever they got in their hand. Thank God the Auto Tapper did the right thing. They got rid of another land. So we play a Percussionist. We play a Percussionist. One of them attacks Lily, the other one attacks your face. They're down to 15. Preacher of the Schism is a pain in the neck. I really need to draw a kill spell here to get rid of that. Yep, attacking for two. They're up to 16, I'm down to 15. I drew another Rotten Mouth Viper, cool. I could cast that for two. Yeah, there's nothing fancy going on here, nothing crazy. So let's do this. What do we get rid of? These two and one of these. Auto pay the rest. Um, I don't think we need a braids, but yeah, I think we really just need a kill spell to get rid of that preacher of the schism right now. Um, that'll work too. Yeah, I'll leave that on top because I can get rid of the bat and get my thing back. So now, they have to decide, am I going to discard a card, sacrifice a creature, or take four damage? Yeah. Sacrifice the Skull Dweller, it's not a big deal. And this has a Death Touch, too, so attacking into that is going to be uh, problematic. So I really need to... Torch the Tower here. I don't have the mana to play the uh, the other ones, so yep. Let's go ahead and oh shoot. Yeah, we got to do that because they're going to take the rotten mouth viper regardless, and now they're going to take the final vengeance because that's a kill spell in my hand. I'm I wouldn't think that they would want to take a. Oh really? Well, that's interesting for you. I right, that's not okay. I mean, I could have played it, and that'd be, like, some hellacious damage for sure, so. Well, kiddos, what do we do here? I think we play land. We final vengeance the preacher. We sack this. Oh, nowhere to run is freaking crazy. And we know where to run and get our other other one back. So that way they're taking the actual damage. Um I wanna tap a black and a red like that. Yep. Get that back. Attack. <clears throat> They have one black mana open, they're not going to be able to uh, do anything with, I mean, like a kill spell, I don't think, for, yeah. Wow, Xaxi's crazy. This, it, it never went this well whenever I was <laughs> playing before, so that's kind of funny. We are here with Lombra playing Magic the Gathering Arena. Yay. What do we got here? Trash. Opponent goes first, of course they do. Uh, we got two hurtful sources of whatever, we got some removal, we got a guy we can't play, we got this thing we can't play, we got a viper we can't play, we got an Urbrex forge that we can't play, so we're mulliging. Uh, okay, Blazemire Verge, I can do the Hopeless Nightmare, and then Spiteful Hex Mage, and then I've got Torch the Tower as well. 
Rotten the Viper always shows up in my hand. But I think we're going to have to get rid of it this turn. Or this, uh, this game. Because that's way too much. Everything else I can play. I f oh, I forgot. Last uh, game, whenever I played versus the mono black aggro thing, I forgot to say hello. It's a polite thing to do. I also forgot to say good game because I'm a horrible person. Ooh, treasure chest. Hey, we got a monkey. And they are on red. That sucks a big one. Um, verge for black into spiteful hex mage or throw down the clockwork percussionist. I think we do... Uh, let's do a mountain for this. Hit him for one. Wasn't expecting the red red deck death. But I should have. They don't have a ley line, though. Maybe it's just, it's not, uh, like, mono-red aggro. Entirely possible. It's Gruul or Rakdos. Maybe it's the mirror match. They're about like me. It's like, oh my god, I can play so many things. Oh! What are you? Whenever a tenant subscribe becomes Taps Cry 1. Well, that's neat. Um. I think, though, I'm just going to kill it. So that I can attack in for one. And then next turn, do Blazemire Verge and start uh, and throw down the Urbrask Forge. They, they have access to red, so it's very easy for them to torch the tower or whatever, too. Or not torch the tower. What's the one where um, a braiding something? You basically can do three damage to a creature, or you can um, do other stuffs. Let's forge. Swing for a couple. The guy goes away, as he does. What are you? Hidden courtyard. Okay. I wonder if we should, uh... Hopeless Nightmare? Or... Disturbing... Yeah... Mm. See, I'm not really sure how to play this. We'll just do this, I guess. Attack for a couple. <clears throat> and then we'll Hopeless Nightmare. And make him discard something and lose two life. So, opponent is going to be down to 11. What they get rid of here? Atali's Favor. Okay, so they're playing the Enchantments deck. Uh, Boros Enchantments, which is... insane. Wow! There's no way I can deal with that right now. Vigilance, Haste, etc. Holy cats. Um... And I'm stuck on three land. I can't play Braids. I can play Disturbing Mirth and get a couple cards. <laughs> Sacrifice that. I get to scry two. I don't land. Cool. Uh, I don't think this is really the way we should win. I think maybe another Urbrask Forge would be the way to go. Let's play a Sulphurous Springs. We get a 3-1 guy, which will very likely be blocked, so our one damage little critter is going to get through. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. That's a play. So hopefully we get a kill spell of some kind. Okay, well, I can't play it. Uh, play that this turn, so... What do you think about a... Uh, spiteful Hex Mage? Um, yeah. We'll pay the black. Comes into play, we'll put it on this guy. Because he's just going to go away anyway. And I got a 3-2 basically for one mana. Whenever a player attacks with five or more creatures, uh, does three damage to each of your opponents, you gain three life. Interesting. Okay. So now they get to discover three, so Lightning Helix? Oh, Mine Raider. So they get another guy. That's going to really stodge up the ground here. I, I really need a... I need something. I'm down to ten. 
Um, how about we forge? And we hopeless nightmare so we can get rid of something in their hand. Petrify. Ancient creature, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And we will just <clears throat> crank out some dudes, I guess. Might as well attack with everything, because I can't... Well, hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, next turn, I could get rid of both of these and play Rottenmouth Viper. Should have attacked with this guy, too, actually. <laughs> sure. <coughs> a kill spell would have been nice in my hand right now, but... Don't have it. <clears throat> so I got a blocker for this guy unless it's removed, otherwise I'm dead. I kill off the spiteful hex mage, I have no way to protect myself. Okay. More guys, sure. Paraclysm from the sideboard would have been pretty nice right about now. Uh, yeah, I'll block that. We are down to four, and that is not the draw that I wanted. Um, braids don't attack, get rid of an enchantment? Or just Rotten Mouth Viper? Yeah, we're just kind of up a, up, a, up a creek here. Let's get rid of this and this. Sacrifice two. Um, auto pay, that still leaves us with one. Yeah, sure. Manifest Dread. Ooh, Torch the Tower! Oh, God! I want both of those! No! Uh... Look at this. Oh... Man, if I had either one of those, it would have been great. Yeah, they just sack a token, and then they're gonna fly over and hit me in the face. Good game, man. This doesn't have haste, so it's not gonna matter. And they just they block. Yeah, eh, whatever. I'll attack. Draw a card. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Man, down to two. And I'm going to be eating death in the air. Would have been lovely to have, well, the whatever it was that kills the actual creature. Would have been nice. I would concede, but, I mean, let him, let him murder me. Sure, yeah, get some more stuff out there. Another, oh, that's the first little guy that I murdered, and now he's probably back from the grave, laughing at me. Nope. <laughs> Why not? You jerk! <laughs> oh, holy crap, Aurelia. That's pretty rad. Here we are with Ujau. Probably mispronouncing that. Let's see. So I got a Torch the Tower. Turn two, I can Disturbing Mirth and then Braids and sure. I don't know. I don't know what to really look for in this. Let's play that and pass. What is this? Hidden Cataract. Cave. Oh, it's caves. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, let's play a Mountain and do nothing. Because... I want to use this to some kind of effect. Hopefully they'll play a critter, and I can know where to run the thing, and then next turn play Disturbing Mirth and get some more cards in the hand. This, that Disturbing Mirth does not pop up in my hand very often at all, which is strange. I mean, it's a four of just like everything else in the deck. <laughs> um, but over the, the course of just goofing off with Sparky and 
playing some other games with this. Yeah, nothing. Um, oh, I thought, okay. Opponent's turn. I thought I had to do something. I was like, uh, or, mm. They either went away, uh, connection issues, or they're trying to decide what to do. Let's see some candy while we're at it. Yum, yum, yum. Hello. Ah, got that. Pizza. Oh, no, it's not pizza. It's a mimic. Oh, gotcha. I don't know what else you can click on in here. Um, okay. My turn, sure. Oh, they are lacking land, looks like. Looks like they're lacking land. Now, I guess, well, that... Blue deck. Function 8. Function up, more like it. <laughs> Two land. We can Freebirder on turn one or Hopeless Nightmare. We could uh, torch the tower a couple different ways and hopefully draw into things. Hello. Um, so, Cliffs into Hopeless Nightmare. No idea what we're playing against. Uh, mono black things, I guess. Demonic Council. Search for a demon card. Reveal it, put it in your hand. Oh, they're doing the Aklazots thing. Well, how interesting. Let us play a thing. And a disturbing mirth. So I can draw a couple cards. Yep, we're going to get rid of the Hopeless Nightmare. Scry 2. After we draw. Uh, another Disturbing Mirth and a Clockwork Percussionist. I don't think either of those things is really what we need right now. Although we do need a dude. And he has haste. Because we'll, we'll need a guy that we can sacrifice to this final vengeance whenever they play here in a minute. They're going to be playing, yep, Unstoppable Slasher. Sure, why not? Why wouldn't you? Torch of the Tower is what? Um, bargain. Sacrifice an artifact, uh, enchantment, or token. So I, can't, I actually can do that. Let's um, do this. Torch the Tower will do three damage. Bargain. Target. Get rid of that. We'll Manifest Dread. Um, manifest Dread, sure. We'll put that guy face down. Um, do we want another Disturbing Mirth? I mean... Not really? Okay. So thankfully that guy is gone away forever, which is kind of nice. Um, let's play our Clockwork Dude. An attack for a massive one. Mm, feel it. Now, Final Vengeance is a sorcery, so I cannot play this at instant speed, which is disappointing. Are you going to play the little dude? Enduring Tenacity. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Okay. I don't have any enchantments to play, though, is the thing. Or tokens. Because this is not considered a token. Pass. My turn. Oh, nowhere to run would work, though. Right? But I want to hit it with the torch the tower, is the thing. It does still get rid of a guy. And they can't gain life if I don't sacrifice this thing. Yeah. It dies. It comes back. Yeah. Sure. We will attack. Play Swamp and Pass. We can't Final Vengeance, but we can Torch the Tower on something. I've got to hold on to that Final Vengeance, though, for this uh, Aklazot's Bloodletter guy. He is part of the combo, after all. There he is! Pash. <clears throat> 
So we can It's only three damage. Oh, no, we have to. Yeah, uh, duh. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. But Cleave Cliffs. Uh, let's see. Let's... Play Final Vengeance. Let's target this. Sacrifice. I really don't want them gaining life. Sacrifice that guy. Okay, Rotmouth Viper is, I guess, going to have to come out next turn. Uh, now we will just attack. Should we play Braids? I'm not even sure. Let's play a Freebooter guy. In the turn. I'd like to keep that nowhere to run so they don't gain life, because that's kind of frightening. I don't know what the deal is with that. Sure. Sure. Let's, uh... Torch the tower, and I guess sacrifice... <sighs> Gotta sacrifice the nowhere to run. Bargain. Target creature. Sacrifice that. Submit one. Another braids is not really what we need. And we will turn this face up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have to sacrifice something to get the Rotten Mouth Viper into play. Should we attack with the with? Let's attack with both because we can still sacrifice one of them to the Rotten Mouth Viper. I guess you can block or not. I don't care. Oh, I'm blocking the big boy. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So let's go ahead and play that. Sacrifice that. Whenever it dies, we get a treasure. We don't need more land, for the love of God. So there's one counter on it. They decided to lose four life. They must have some kind of kill spell. They were just tapped out. Come back wrong. Okay. It dies. Okay. Um, I'll lose four life. Thank you. It's fine. Um, tell me if you've heard this. You can discard a card. A non-land permanent. So, yeah, yeah, just get rid of that. The thing I was so worried about. It, it might have been just to throw me off. I don't know. Go for the throat? I guess would be a thing. Target opponent sacrifice half the creatures that control rounded up. Sure. Okay. Um, let's play this. Let's play that. Put that on that, right? We'll play Braids too, why not? Attack with the monkey. So, if I sacrifice this guy, they have to sh sacrifice the same, but they can't, so they lose two life and I get to draw a card, so we'll do that. I should have done the enchantment, though. That was dumb of me. Hey, Urbrask Forge. That was dumb of me. Gain six life, create three, two, one black. Well, that's unfair. What the actual hell is this about? Draw three cards, gain six life. At the beginning of your end step, you just card a card, lose two life. Oh, okay. <coughs> Interesting. So they got some blockers. 
So let's play a Montagne. Um, let's play an Urbrask's Forge. That isn't that isn't instant, right? Yeah. Um, the core attackers before blockers. I don't need to bargain or anything like that. It's just straight up cast this, kill one of your guys. Um, yeah, get rid of your bat. Yep, interesting. Uh, I have never seen that card before. What is this? Greed's Gambit. Enchantment. Whenever it enters, you draw three cards, gain six life, and create three two one black bat creature tokens of flying. At the beginning of your end step, you discard a card, lose two life, sacrifice. Uh, when it leaves the battlefield, you discard three cards, lose six life, and sacrifice three creatures. Oh wow. Is that the the combo? I guess with maybe this enduring tenacity. Or if you gain life, but you're yeah, I mean you're you're gaining you're gaining life whenever you do this. Welcome, Zaroku. Oh crap, I didn't tell him good game either, that other guy. Ah again. So what do we got? We got uh, stuff, whatever. Doesn't matter, it's just a game. Let's play Cliffs and Percussionist. And ride that monkey to victory. Bam, bam, bam. Ah, cruel. Cruel things. Let's... Blaze! I wonder if we should... Hexmage? Mm. Attack. Hopeless Nightmare. <laughs> See what they got going on? I mean, it's gruel colors. But, what else they got? Oh, Enduring Courage. That is a really good card. Um, Scavenger's Talent. Whenever one more creature you control, die. Sure, we'll throw that out now so we can get a little bit of value out of it. I don't think I'm going to be bumping it up next turn, but whatever. I'll at least get some food tokens and hopefully stay alive. Turn off the lights. Glimpse the core. Search your library for a basic forest card. Put it into the battlefield. Tap, then shoofle. So, rampy things, I guess. What now? Attack. Attack and Hex Mage and be sad because I didn't draw another land, which would have been pretty nice, but I don't have it. I think whatever they play now is going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger than what this Torch of the Tower is going to be able to deal with, in my opinion. I think I'm not putting enough pressure on them. Invasion of Zendikar, sure. Uh, they get a bunch more land, and whenever this thing hop pops over, they have a Vigilance Haste Monster, because of course they do. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, whenever you sacrifice a permanent turret, play your mills two cards. Let's do this. Attack for five. And in the turn. I'm not seeing my final whatever it is that kills big beefy bad boys here. And I got seven. Oh, good. No, it's just it's just a giant. Uh, dinosaur. It's fine. Uh, exile player until they non land, blah blah blah. What is it? Oh, get the. Well, mm. Torch the tower. Okay. Sure. 
It didn't die, it didn't go to the graveyard, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, they gotta get rid of... Wait, what? What is happening? Whenever it enters, but because... I don't understand here. How did they get two triggers, though? Well, they should have sacrificed one. I guess they got the other. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, cool. Well, trample and trample. So that's 13 damage. Disturbing mirth. Sacrifice that. Of course I didn't. Oh god, I need a kill spell here, my guy. Play a swamp. It says one of you. I'm not sacrificing permanence. Uh, attack? No. That's a horrible way to die. Should have applied more pressure early on. I also would like to have a final vengeance in my hand. That's kind of irritating. Sure. Gain some more life. Attack Attack the thing. Sure. I mean, what am I gonna do? Um and attack me for seven. What are you playing more things? Wait this this gets double strike now, so I'm taking you down to fourteen and then I'll have like eighty five creatures. That's one thing with this, is the amount of removal in this is you have a few different things, but nothing like, oh, if it's a 4-4 or higher, I have to get one of the four cards in this deck. If I don't, then I'm up a creek. Um, we'll block with uh, both. Who cares? Because they're both gonna they're both gonna die. I'm taking a massive amount of damage anyway. Food, food, uh, land, and, and more land. Cool. Great game. You're awesome. I love you. Resolve. Hit me for 17 next turn. Uh, gain three life draw card. Sure. Go back up to 17. You might as well play some more stuff that can just hammer into my butthole. Heaped harvest. Yep, sure. Why not? Just to show that there's no possible way that I could ever defeat you. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, one and play another land as well. So they're attacking me for a bunch. I ate food. <laughs> oh, God. Sure. Good game. I'm done. <laughs> there's no there's no way I'm coming back from that. Couldn't find any kill spells. Yeah, that's... I'm done. Hey! 500 uh, mega points. Let's go to the store and buy a pack of Duskmorn. Uh, packs. Uh, Duskmorn. Buy. Claim. Eat it with your mouth. Okay. Go to packs. Crack it open. Hey, I got another uh, flood pins to drown her. Those are kind of neat. I like those. Um, good way to deal with critters that are uh, like the unstoppable slasher. That's actually pretty nice because, okay, I'm going to tap it and then for two minutes and then tapping this. I'm going to put this back in my library, and your other guy gets put away as well. So, neener, neener, neener. A um, bunch of stuff apparently I've already got. And the mythic is Overlord of the Hauntwoods. That's pretty nice. Whenever it enters or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named everywhere. That is a that is every basic land. So, good for domain for sure. Which I will never play, because I don't have enough wild cards for that. So, yeah. 
Uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and think about subscribing because it really helps me out. It doesn't cost you anything at all. Until next time, this is Dirty William doing the dirty work.